Sabbath day. There was nothing written. And so the Jews coming in and say, well, it's just like we, we just keep the Sabbath day and just keep circumcising. That's, that's God, ain't, God don't ever change. So we're in Christ now. And, we, and, and there was no definitive place to go and say, wait a minute, the book says this. So prophecy, the Holy Spirit giving utterance at that moment was very significant. Paul said, this is our spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. And even when it came to speaking tongues, he said, I would rather speak five words in a known language than to speak a volume in, in unknown because there was nobody in the church that had a New Testament. The New Testament didn't exist. So when you came in, you had no idea what to believe. You just knew Christ died for your sins, rose again, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. But what now? What do church people do? What's the doctrine? What do we teach? What do we believe? Do we still circumcise? And you say, circumcise the eighth day, keep the Sabbath, you know, don't eat this kind of meat, don't eat food off. And they just started laying down the law, <laughs> literally. And so it was such a commotion. The Gentiles said, we got to be circumcised now. We got to keep the Sabbath. And they were trying to figure things out. There was no New Testament. And so the apostles and elders, there's so much commotion, the apostles had to get together and say, wait a minute, we got a situation on our hands. We got things that don't go with grace being taught as part of the church. Anybody, anybody can identify with that? Anybody been holding this a while? Oh, no, Doc. You know, uh-uh. You can't be saved doing that. <laughs> so, so and I mean, we have people literally, I mean, literally in holiness and probably in other places teaching that if you sin, you were lost at that moment until you confessed. That was being taught. And I remember asking one person who believed that, uh, which they couldn't answer and still refused to change their opinion about the matter. I said, well, you believe that, uh, you, I said, you believe, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, okay. So you believe when you were lost, you can't be lost in heaven, so that's right. So you believe the Holy Spirit left you when you sinned, yep. So what convicted you and, made, and what made you feel like you need to repent if there's no Holy Spirit there? Uh, what, what convicted you? Uh, mm, well, I don't know. Well, I don't think the Holy Spirit left. I think you may have grieved him. I got some Bible for that. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, when you repented, the Holy Spirit came back in. Yeah. Did you speak? Well, no. <laughs> okay. So maybe he never left. I'm so glad that when I sin, God doesn't leave me. Otherwise, Paul would have to say, grieve not the Holy Spirit. What grieves him? He talks about things, the things that grieve. You feel your heart just like being bothered. Something when you, when you mess up. And so, whereas we have Bible that can, we can show you that God does not leave you. He stays with you. Sealed until the day of, yeah, thank you, thank you, Fragizo. She, she, she's quoting Ephesians. Bible says you have been sealed, Fragizo. Seal until the day of redemption. Well, they didn't have that. So if I was in church back then, I, I could say, you, we just ask, as you know, you get when you sin, you lost. There was no first John. Confess your sins. God is faithful and just forgive you. He's not going to save you. He's faithful and just forgive you your sins. And you're right back with one with God. So they didn't have a New Testament. So the gifts were very, very, very important. But now we have a Bible. Now we have a we can teach church doctrine. We have to wait till somebody has a gift of prophecy. Oh, we're, we're going to learn out what we believe now. And not only that, when you prophesy, it's secondary to Scripture. Scripture takes precedence over your prophecy because your, if your prophecy don't line up with the word, it's either your word, <laughs> your prophecy going out the door or the Bible going out the door. Guess which one I'm going to choose. Yeah. So and some of us say, say, we try the spirit by the spirit. No. <laughs> You can, you can, you know, but I will try the spirit by your word. I will prove, I will prove your prophecy by, by the word. And then sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you so-and-so is off and so-and-so that's not right. And you, you'll feel that. But in case you don't, i got a book here. Everything has to line up with it. Amen? So as we flip the Bible open, praise the Lord, Pastor John. God bless you. Love you in Jesus' name. Come on in, sir. Um. As we look at the Bible open, we should be especially appreciative because the first church didn't have what you have. 
It's just like, just like when, when there was a good time when we couldn't vote. It just was illegal for black people to vote. And so there were generations before us who fought and died so we would vote. And they voted. And now that we can vote, ask how many, how, how many 18 and 19 year olds in the hood who, who were registered to vote. But if you pass the law and say, yo, y'all can't vote no more. There might be riots in the streets. <laughs> they told us we can't vote. We don't appreciate what has been given. And, and, and even the same way that that's true in, in, in society and culture, it's also true. We're not that appreciative since we got a Bible. Until the day they come, and there will come a day when they will, will remove Bibles in this world. I, I, I got, we won't, I'm not dealing with prophecy yet. In times, there will come a day when you will not be allowed to carry this in, on this planet. There will be a guy here who, won't, who, who don't want this. Just like, it's like in North Korea. You know, try this in North Korea. You can't do this. Right now, North Korea. No religion. <laughs> don't, don't allow it. There will come a day. And then that's when we'll appreciate what we have here. So let's not casually flip open the Bible. Let's be thankful as we flip it open. First Thessalonians 2. First Thessalonians 2. Y'all look so glum this morning. What did I say? We were smiling, nigga. What did I say? Eli, oh, Denzel Washington? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. I read them all. Yeah. Yeah, but two good references. Um, um, Eli, which is a good movie, by the way. I like Denzel. My, my. <laughs> so I was going to watch it anyway, but uh, the book of Eli, yeah, very good movie. Uh, yeah, got a witness here, and also the Left Behind series of books. It's a, it's a, it, it, it's, I love, it's, it's a very good. I think it's a pretty interesting look at the end time and how the way that guy rises, the way the Antichrist rises, Nikolai rises. I think it's kind of almost like the script the way he rises up because the, the Antichrist will be a man of peace. And oddly enough, when we get to, uh, uh, interesting enough, when we get to First Thessalonians four, we're gonna take some time and talk about what the Bible says about the end time. Pastor John I almost did a video about the end time years ago. Um, the Lord was really moving on us about the end time. We were doing some studies, and I wish we had done that because we were, we, had, we were at the pinnacle of our knowledge, lots of things we've forgotten. One of our friends prophesied and told us we were supposed to do that video, which we ended up not doing, probably because we were somewhere playing chess, but a uh, whole other story. But <laughs> First Thessalonians 2, First Thessalonians 2, it's going to be interesting times. And you can see things shaping up. Let me just say one thing I mentioned in time. The most fascinating thing to me, me about the Bible is, about the end time portion of the Bible, is that the Bible was written at a time when there were no computers, right? There, there, was, a, there was money, but there was no scanners. You know, there was no optic ink. There were no chips. And there was no concept of buying things without a physical change of goods or currency. No concept. If you wanted me, you bring me some grain, or you bring me some tokens. You know, if you, if you wanted to marry my daughter, bring me some oxen, y'all.
Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So let's make let's make this a uh, in time trailer. In time trailer. Okay, it'll take ten minutes. We're gonna teach you about the end times. When we get the first session for, we're gonna detail some of this. All right. So in the beginning of history, as man began to do warfare, whoever had the strongest ground force ruled the day. Right. If you had the army, right? Then people built boats later. And whoever had the strongest navy, by the time Spain became a powerful nation, it was because they had the biggest navy. They figured out how to build boats and make them travel across the seas. So the ones who were just still fighting on the ground, like, oh, that's a big old boat. What's happening here? Well, they're bringing soldiers over here to this part because it's more strategic to attack you. But since y'all didn't have boats, we're going to take our army in a boat, put them across here, and attack you from this side. So whoever had the biggest, biggest navy, later in history, rule the day. Then somebody been in the airplane. They say it was the Wright brothers. I got some stuff about that, but we'll, we'll just assume right now it's right, but they were not the ones. But anyway, we're going to go on. So it was the Wright brothers, right? So now you have air, airplanes. So after, let's say, the late 20s, whoever had the strongest air force ruled the day. Because the ships didn't do you no good if I'm up in the sky and you can't reach me and I'm, and I'm raining. Whoever had that, who was that? But according to the book of Daniel, after the Roman Empire would fall, which he predicted, he predicted, at the, keep in mind that Daniel, Daniel predicted all four empires that would rule the whole earth, all of them. <laughs> he said, after Babylon is going to come Greece. He predicted Alexander the Great. <laughs> after Greece is going to come Rome. Right there, in the, right there, hundreds of years before they took place, before Alexander was even born, Daniel prophesied about it. And then he said Rome was going to come. And he said that place was going to be the last place to rule the whole world was going to be Rome, and the next one was going to be the Antichrist. So Rome took over from Greece, just like Daniel predicted, right down the line. It's like unbelievable he could write this stuff hundreds of years before it happened, just like it happened. And then after Rome, all that had to happen for the Bible to be false was for another nation to come where Rome was. And after all those Caesars, and Rome got overrun by the barbarians, all that had to happen was for one nation to rule the whole world, and the Bible would have been wrong. But since Rome fell over 1,500 years ago, no one nation has ruled the civilization since. None. There's two opportunities for one nation to rule the whole world. We talked about the Air Force. Something was invented called the atom bomb in the 40s. The nation that invented the atom bomb had a chance to rule the world. Because if I dropped this atom bomb on you, y'all know how World War II ended, right? They dropped the atom bomb on two cities and said, now, if y'all don't surrender, guess what happens next? So Japan surrendered, the Allies won, right? But who, what was the nation who invented the atom bomb? What nation? The United States. We were like one of the only nations that could have invented the bomb and decided we're not going to take the world over. When we had the atom bomb, Sharon, we could have called Russia, China, North Korea, which I'm going to tell you this one time. Uh, we're sending our emissary over. He's going to run your country. If you got any questions, any comments, or concerns, you got two hours. If, you, if we don't hear a yes, sir, in two hours, we're bombing. We're going to drop an atom bomb on your capital city. Nothing nobody could have done. Nobody else had the technology. But the United States is the only country, major country, that would have said, we got the atom bomb. We're just going to sit on it. We're not going to rule the world with it. So we sat on it until everybody else got it figured out. Then it's even again. What was the next advent? After Adam Baum, what else could have changed the world? Somebody said it. The nuclear bomb. So Adam Baum was no longer the thing because now in the 50, in 1952, 50, in the 50s, I believe it was 52, the nuclear bomb was invented. Now, if, if you didn't have nukes, you were done for. So Russia, China, Japan, North Korea, all those people working scientists day and night who 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 from who are just, this is what you do. Your dad will sign you, so this is what you do. Get in this lab. In America, you know, the, the guy might be brilliant. The most brilliant guy I know drove a beer truck. He didn't want to be no scientist. He's the smartest guy I've ever met. Drove a beer truck. 
walked out of college, <laughs> they said I wasn't interested. I met him, and the guy, the guy's Einstein. Einstein, take a computer like program, you tell him anything, boom, 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 this language, he, somebody finally figured out, made a program matter, and, and he's like, like, he just, he's, he's Einstein. Einstein couldn't have been smarter than he was. But he just chose, I don't wanna go to college. And those other nations, you that brilliant, no, this is what you're gonna do. A lot of those other nations, they, they, they you know, this is what you're gonna do. So all these nations working furiously to develop war technology, and somebody came up with a nuclear bomb. What nation came up with a nuclear bomb? That was us. <laughs> they working day and night to come up with the next thing because they're going to rule the world. Germany gets it. It's done. We all speak in German, right? Wing, doc. This is German. When dying God talk is. Wing, doc, mining. That's the legitimate German. That's what we'd be speaking now if they got the nuclear bomb. I don't know how to speak Russian. We speak Russia got it, North Korea. England probably the only one would have done what we did. It's just, just, we got this technology now. Don't mess with us and don't mess with our friends. Don't mess with Israel and don't mess with you know, our friends. We got a nuke here. The United States set on it. Eventually, it was either stolen or by, by, by other governments, the technology stole, or they came with on their own. So for about uh, 10, 11 years, we could have ruled the world. But the Bible already said that we weren't going to do it. That's why God that there wouldn't be another nation to rule the world outside of Rome. So Antichrist came. That's why God allowed the technology to come to us first. Now time has gone by, right? And we see the end times approaching. We don't know what the next big thing is going to be. Adam Baum is now 52. How many years is that? 50. Is that 90 years old? I mean, 70 years old? So the, the, the nuclear bomb, which is still the height of warfare technology, is 70 years old. There will be a next thing. And guess who's probably going to get it? No. The way things are shaping up, the end time's too close. This time, if you read the scriptures demographically, it looks like that technology is going to be built somewhere near Syria, somewhere in the Middle East. And why do I know that? And why do I say that? Because the guy who has the technology, here's what he's going to do. He's going to say, and we'll lay all this out. He's going to say, I want y'all to surrender me. I have new technology. People are going to say, Pfft. he's going to take out three cities. Three cities with three nations with it. He say, I told you, and the rest, everybody else is going to say amen. It's not going to be the United States, I don't believe. I think we're too close to end times. And we'll find out. But when you look at the demographic, it looks like it's going to come out of the Middle East. It looks like it's going to be somebody like Syria. Um, in the Middle East, and, and the guy who has the technology, <laughs> his method of execution, his faith, you know, in the United States, you're going to execute somebody. I mean, in the United States, how do we execute people? Not lethal injection, but, but what was our favorite way to execute people in the United States? Electric chair, and before that, gas, gas. yeah. Firing, firing squad, we a lot, lot would like to shoot. You ever heard the United States beheading anybody? No, we don't do that. That's not part of Western culture. The guy who has the technology, his preferred method of execution is beheading. What does that tell you? It's not going to be the United States. It's not going to be the United States that has the technology. Saints, it's time to pray. It's time to be prayed up, fasted up, ready, worded up, on point, on mission, saving souls, because more and more signs are pointing toward the end time. We got volunteers now that, that, that will take the chip, link you to all your credit accounts. You, you, you will no longer be robbed. Matter of fact, we will know who was at the crime scene. You won't be wondering, did OJ shoot her? Where was your chip? It was at that residence. It's going to be crime prevention because if you go anywhere and do anything, we can place you at the scene at the time the crime occurred. You don't have to clock in. You were on the job right there in the building. At the time, you don't have to worry about your credit cards being lost, stolen. You don't have to worry about your fingerprints. Absolutely. He's going to be a man of peace. He's going to be a man of peace. Some other interesting things. Now, based on some scripture, he's not going to really like women. He's going to be a man that, you know, it's not, you know, how you can read that a bunch of different ways, but he rides power. It's not going to be a man that, 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 you know, it's going to be, and we'll show that. But when you look at the characteristics here, it's going to be an interesting thing. And not only that, the last thing is 
He's going to guarantee Israel's safety because he wants peace in the world. He's going to say, I want peace. And even though I'm from this region that has been war with Israel, I'm guaranteeing Israel's safety. And if you mess with Israel, you mess with me. Whose spot is that right now, by the way? Who does that right now? The United States. So where are we? If this guy's guaranteeing Israel's safety, where are we? But see, I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's an interesting question. Why somebody else guaranteeing Israel's safety if that's our job? Hmm. So we'll look at, uh, we'll look at, uh, we'll look at, uh, now don't get too glum, y'all. <laughs> Because, because we are who, 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 whose kids are we? Whose church are we? Who got us? Who leads his your children along? Sometimes through the fire. Sometimes through the God leads who? His dear children along. Sometimes through great trials, but all through the blood, God leads his your children along. Sometimes on a mountain where the sun shines bright, God leads his children along. I got you. Sometimes in the valley, in the darkest of night, God leads his children along. Sometimes to sorrow, though Satan opposes, God leads his dear children along. Through grace, we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along. We ain't worried about how I shape up. We got a daddy. Just like that mother duck. They feel safe. Just walk behind. Just walk behind that. Walk behind my, all we got to do is walk behind God. We all right. God leads the children along. Stand your feet. We're going to close it out. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Our God got us. Know exactly where we are. I love Pastor John's story when he was talking about uh, he and I were in uh, traveling New Orleans. And... Uh, um, he was saying, you don't, you don't, you don't, remember, don't remember all the details. He was saying we were trapped. There was a lightning storm there. And it was close. Boom, 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 boom. And um, it was, he, the way he tells it, um, again, I don't remember all the details, but he says that uh, it was, it was kind of getting so close to the car. And, um, and I turned to him and said, uh, don't worry. God knows exactly where we are. Knows that. And, 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 and that sounds exactly like something I would say. And matter of fact, I remember saying that. I remember saying that God knows exactly where we are. And, um, and so no matter how things start to trade, starts to get, God knows exactly where his kids are. Not only that, how many hairs. See, see he might say, not a hair of hers is going to fall. Satan. <laughs> okay, God, okay. I want one hair. I got you, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got oh, yeah, don't, don't. You remember those coyotes from the Lion King when Mufasa showed up? Did you touch my son? Oh, was this your son? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, we, we weren't trying to mess with you. Oh, no, no, no. It's even worse than that with God and Satan. You know, he said, take Job, do what you want, don't touch God. Oh, yes, oh, oh, yes, certainly, Lord. Say, no by now. God got you. He leads his children along. I ask y'all to eventually close in prayer, and uh, we can have great comfort. This hope we have is an anchor. It keeps our mind together. We know God got it. Yes, sir, close this out. I'm sorry, pastors, Pastor John, Pastor Daryl, any additions? Okay, all right. Close out in prayer, sir. Thank you. Thank you. never forget, Lord, how you helped us, Lord Jesus. Take us on, Lord Jesus. All these blessings we ask in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Bless us, Jesus. In Jesus' name. I'm not I'm like, you can't do Jesus enough. I, I love that. Amen. 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 Amen.